Cornell's comprehensive assessment of soil health goes beyond just testing soil nutrient levels. But like any soil testing, the information it provides depends on how well you sample the soil, as well as asking the right questions before sampling. Although the Cornell Soil Health Lab accepts samples year-round, the best time to take soil samples is in the spring. You should take your samples when the soil is workable and neither too wet nor too dry. A good rule of thumb is if the field can be plowed, it is probably a good time to sample. How you sample will depend on what questions you're trying to answer. If you're trying to assess soil health for an entire field or management unit with similar soils and management history, walk through the entire field making a path that looks like a big W, taking sub-samples at 5 to 10 spots. Avoid areas that are not representative of your entire sampling area. Or if you're trying to identify soil constraints for trouble spots in a field, make your path just through the identified weak part of the field. Sample this problem area as a separate labeled sample. It is also useful to take a sample from outside of your management area to help quantify the effects of your management. So I've identified that this spot is a good representation of our field. So the first step is to remove the debris. You don't need to dig that deep of a hole. You're looking for about eight inches. The soil is basically perfect for taking a soil sample might be slightly on the wet side, but in the spring, you gotta kinda take it when you have a chance, and this is our chance. So I'm removing the soil. I set it to the side so that I can put it back in the hole so we don't have any holes the tractor might have problems with. All right, so I've got about an eight inch hole, and now I'm gonna take what we call a slice of bread from the edge of the hole. We're looking for about two inches thick by about the shovel wide and six inches deep. All right, we pull it up. It's about perfectly six inches deep, but now we're looking for the soil to be consist, or we want to have consistent amounts of soil from the top layer down to the six inch mark. So I'm removing any extra soil from the side. We're looking for that nice even layer a little thicker at the bottom, it's gonna even it out a bit. Looks pretty good. It's about six inches. And then it goes in the bucket. This is sample one. And then from there we can move on and take the other samples. You will want to take a penetrometer reading at each spot that you're sampling across the W-shaped pattern. So you're gonna be looking at the zero to six inch mark and also zero to 18, and you're gonna be watching the inner gauge on the penetrometer and making a mental note of what the highest PSI you reach is. So first we're gonna go down to the six inch. There's this mark down here that shows us the six inch and the 18 is a little bit higher. So I'm not feeling too much compaction. I'm keeping an eye on the six inch mark. That hit about 150 PSI. Make a mental note of that and then you continue to the 18 inch mark. I start to feel more compaction. I'm surpassing 300 PSI. There's the plow pan. And you gotta push a little bit farther to get to that 18. That hit about 400 PSI. I've made a mental note of how much compaction I recorded with the penetrometer. 
and I'm going to go ahead and take the back of the submission form. In this case, this is location one. So zero to six was 150 and six to 18 was 400. All right, and then we're ready to move to our next location. Now that I've taken 10 subsamples across the field in a W-shaped pattern, I will mix the sample extremely well. At the same time, I'm pulling any plant matter out to make sure that we have an accurate sample to send to the lab. Now I have this well-mixed soil. There's no clods, everything is broken up really well. The soil is at a really nice consistency for sampling. You can see how the aggregates just sort of crumble apart, showing we have good structure, probably good microbial activity. And then I go ahead and I take my labeled Ziploc bag. I have my submission form right here, which I use. I've already filled out the front of this. I, mean, I know I'm in field E. And I go ahead and start taking samples out of this. So the way that we typically do it in our research plots, kind of like take a handful, don't really worry about sort of spilling some, toss some out of there. I'm avoiding any debris and I'm looking for about six cups because I'm taking this for the extended package. If I was taking it for the basic package, that requires three cups, that's about three cups. And then if I'm going for the standard, I'm looking for about four cups. That's about what that looks like. Maybe a little more. That'd probably be nice for a standard. But in this case, we're doing the extended. So we're looking for six cups of soil. All right, that's a little more than six cups right there. That's what we're looking for. Looks great. Go ahead, close your bag and you're ready to move on to your next field. After you've collected all of your subsamples, mix them well, put them into a bag, you're gonna go ahead and just make a note of your GPS coordinates. You should use whatever program works best for you and you don't need to record each section, each one of your subsamples. If you want to, that's great, of course, but generally I would just record the field. Send your soil samples via the United States Post Office Rapid Shipping and remember to include a submission form with a blue ice pack in a labeled Ziploc bag. Note, an ice pack is only necessary in the hot months and is not needed if the weather is cool and you use rapid shipping. Please refer to our website for more detailed instructions on taking a soil sample, including a field guide for soil sampling and more information on soil health in general.